welcome to Breathe Kids Church. We are so glad that you have joined us. My name is Lucy and myself and the Breathe Kids team are going to have the best morning with you all. After three, I want you to shout your names as loud as you can. One, two, three. Awesome. To start off our morning, I am going to hand over to Grace and Rose who have got an awesome part two of Would You Rather. Hi guys. Hi. So it's Rose and Grace and today we're going to be doing Would You Rather. So if you don't know how to play, all you do is ask, would you rather do this or that? So let's get started. So Grace, would you rather always have to eat at KFC or always have to eat at McDonald's? Probably McDonald's. Same. Okay. Would you rather um, have a dog as a pet or a cat? A dog. Okay. Would you rather never shower again and never brush your teeth? Never brush your teeth. I'd never shower. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay, would you rather it always be summer or always be winter? Always be winter. Always be summer. <laughs> okay, now it's your go. If you want to have a go at this, why not get your grown-ups to send in photos or videos of me doing this challenge to the Breathe Kiss Church Dropbox so that we can have a look at it next week on our Kiss Church. We are now going to go into a time of praise and worship, so get your singing voices ready and your dancing feet ready. Let's go and praise Jesus together.
Was so much fun. Last week we looked at how the two Marys were first to see Jesus after he rose again and how they went and told the others the amazing news. Today we are going to look at when Jesus revealed himself to his disciples. Let's watch this cartoon together. Stories of the Bible. God is with us. This is Jesus. hey -o. Jesus is the Savior of the world and the Son of God. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love. He healed many people from their sickness, performed many miracles like calming storms, and even raised people from the dead. But some people did not like what Jesus was doing. And they put him to death. He died on a cross and was buried in a tomb. For three days, Jesus' body laid in that tomb, and it seemed that there was no hope. But very early on Sunday morning, the woman who cared for Jesus went to go visit his body, found that his tomb was empty and that he was no longer there. For he was risen. He was alive. Woohoo! Huh? Hey oh! Ah! And then for the next 40 days, Jesus appeared to his disciples and many others and showed them that he was alive and well. <laughs> he taught them that what he did was the only way that they could be forgiven and be with God forever. Jesus told his disciples that he did all the things that God had told everyone that he would do, and the disciples understood what he was saying. Yep, that makes sense. He told them that he would send the Holy Spirit, just as God had promised to be their helper. Sounds good. After Jesus had spent 40 days with the disciples and appeared to many people, hey, that's it. He led the disciples to a place called Bethany. Jesus blessed the disciples and told them to go out and tell the whole world about him and the good news of forgiveness and make disciples of them. Then he said, be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Then Jesus was taken into heaven to sit at the right hand of God. Not long after that, the Holy Spirit did come to the disciples to be their helper. The disciples knew that God would truly be with them always. And the Holy Spirit is still with us today, for Jesus promised that he would be with us to the end of the age 
And he is. That was an amazing story. Now is the time for you to go and get your notebooks, your Bibles, and your pens to take some notes. You have got 10 seconds. Go. So Jesus appeared to a few of the women who followed him. He told them to tell his disciples in Matthew 28 verse 10 to meet him in Galilee. In fact, before Jesus told them this, the angels told them to tell his followers to meet him in Galilee. We read in John 20 what happened before they went to Galilee. Mary had told Peter and John the amazing news. Turn with me to John chapter 20 verses 3 to 8 and we can read it together. It says this. So Peter and the other follower started for the tomb. They were both running, but the other follower ran faster than Peter. So the other follower reached the tomb first. He bent down and looked in. He saw the strips of linen cloth lying there, but he did not go in. Then following him came Simon Peter. He went into the tomb and saw the strips of linen lying there. He also saw the cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up and laid in a different place from the strips of linen. Then the other follower, who had reached the tomb first, also went in. He saw and believed. I love that Peter and John both ran to see the tomb where Jesus was. They must have been so excited. John ran faster than Peter, but he didn't go in first, Peter did. John then followed and he believed. Something that I found really interesting is how it says Peter saw the strips of linen lying there and he also saw the cloth that had been around Jesus' head. That cloth wasn't just lying there, it had actually been folded up and put to the side away from the rest of the linen. I wanted to find out why this was. Was it just a coincidence or was there meaning behind it? So I did some research and I found out that it was a Hebrew tradition to fold your napkin when you left the dinner table if you were going to be going back to finish eating. If you were not coming back, you would just throw the napkin into the table to show you were finished. So Jesus actually folded the cloth he had on his head as a sign he was not finished and that he was coming back. I don't know about you, but that blew my mind. All the disciples would have known about this tradition. So when Peter and John saw this, it was a sign to them that Jesus was in fact not finished and was coming back. I love it. Jesus is so amazing. Well, now we know that the women who followed Jesus, Peter and John, knew Jesus had come back. Let's see what happens next. Turn with me to John chapter 20 verses 19 to 20 and we can read it together. It says this. It was the first day of the week. That evening the followers were together. The doors were locked because they were afraid of the Jews. Then Jesus came and stood among them. He said, peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The followers were very happy when they saw the Lord. So now Jesus has proven to his followers that he has risen from the dead. He showed them the holes in his hands and his side. Can you imagine seeing straight through someone's hand? That would be crazy. This also must have been hard for some of them to believe. Let's face it, it isn't every day you see someone who has risen from the dead, is it? There was one disciple in particular who needed a little more information to believe. His name was Thomas. He was famously called Doubting Thomas. Now he wasn't actually there when Jesus appeared to them, so some of Jesus' followers told him. Turn with me to John chapter 20 verses 25 to 29 and we can read it together. It says this. The other followers told Thomas, we saw the Lord. But Thomas said, I will not believe it until I see the nail marks in his hands. And I will not believe until I put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side. A week later, the followers were in the house again. Thomas was with them. The doors were locked, but Jesus came in and stood among them. He said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here. Look at my hands. Put your hand here in my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord, my God. Then Jesus told him, 
You believe because you see me. Those who believe without seeing me will truly be happy. I can understand why Thomas would want to have proof that Jesus was alive. Jesus was so kind, he allowed Thomas to find out for himself that it was really him. However, Jesus then ends his conversation by saying, those of us that believe without seeing will be truly happy. And that is me and you. We believe in Jesus, yet we have never actually seen him with our own eyes. We have faith and Jesus loves that but he also understands why Thomas wanted the proof. We read on in John 21 how Jesus appeared to his followers again in Galilee where he had told them to go. It says in verse 14 that this was the third time he showed himself to his followers after he had risen from the dead. I love that Jesus went out and revealed himself to his followers. He was getting ready to give them a mission, but we will find out about that next week. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we have loved learning all about what Jesus did after he rose from the dead. I pray that we would continue to learn more about you and how much you love us. We want to thank you for Jesus and how he has saved us all. I pray that we would carry this good news with us wherever we go. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and Amen. This week you have got a brand new memory verse and it's from Acts chapter 1 verse 3 and it says this After his death he showed himself to them and proved in many ways that he was alive. Say it with me, Acts 1 verse 3 After his death he showed himself to them and proved in many ways that he was alive. You can underline this and highlight it in your Bibles, write it on a sticky note and stick it on your bathroom mirror so that everyone in your house can see this amazing Word of God. This week we have got a brand new devotional for you which is all about how Jesus revealed himself to his disciples and you can find this on the Breathe New Life Church website underneath the Breathe Kids Church section. I just want to remind you guys again about Ignite. If you haven't been able to sign up for Wednesday evenings, don't worry, you still are able to do that. The link is in this post, so get your grown-ups to sign you up so that we can send you the Zoom details and everything you need to know. Remember, Ignite is every other Friday, uh, which you will find on YouTube, where me and Deb will be having fun with you guys, and maybe there will be a special guest as well. And every other Wednesday, we will be learning a bit more about Jesus on Zoom together. So we hope to see you there. I have loved looking at this amazing story with you. And I love learning more about Jesus every week with you. We hope you have the best week and we will see you all very, very soon. Bye.